right guys it is the last day of april uh it's april 30th it's the last day we start uh, may tomorrow and today is a very nice warm day i think this cold weather has broken we've got a week in the 70s and even 80s uh there are guys now today uh planting corn and there are also guys doing uh, tillage um it's way too windy for me to start doing anything i have to start spraying but it is really gusty today so what i ended up having to do today was start mowing some grass um now i'm not going to make this whole video about mowing grass uh, it's uh, not interesting and uh, i probably wouldn't watch too many videos of mowing grass but i figured i'd just uh give a couple more piece of information as to how things are done here um i uh as part of my agreement to be here in uh along with paying rent of course uh, is uh i have to mow all the grass on the property uh not all of it um the landlord had set a uh, uh areas that he wanted me to mow and it's not too much but it's enough i mean it's a lot of wear and tear on my uh lawnmower here it's a very cheap uh, lawnmower um it is a bigger lawnmower but it's it's still a homeowner lawnmower it's not a heavy duty industrial uh <laughs> or i should say commercial strength lawnmower this husqvarna um so i'm just letting it cool off here a little bit um it's always a good idea with these newer ones with all the aluminum uh, parts and uh, plastic gears in the engine um it's always a good idea it's recommended that after they're real hot to let them idle and cool off a little before you shut them down because of warping issues but anyway um my uh, landlord actually has uh, a real nice uh, lawn mowing uh, piece of equipment. He's got a, one of those diesel Kubotas. I don't know if it's the B BX, BC. I'm not familiar with Kubota at all. I know I worked on quite a few, um, but just not real familiar with Kubotas. Um, anyway, it's a real nice diesel, uh, four-wheel drive. He's got a real heavy gauge uh, deck on the machine, and uh, he likes mowing grass. Uh, he likes to come up here every so often and... Uh, he has areas that he likes to mow so um, last year I was trying to be a kind of a overachiever I guess and I was trying to mow just about everything uh, just so he wouldn't have to uh, mess around with uh, coming up and mowing grass well he told me many times that he loves mowing grass and he really uh, likes to uh, run the Kubota and I think I was doing more harm to myself uh, having all the grass cut and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he'd come up and all that would be left would be a couple patches that I couldn't get into with this so I think this year we're gonna lay off uh, cutting so much grass um, I did it for a couple reasons all I, I wanted to help him out and uh, help keep the place looking nice but also I wanted to try to keep the ticks down and the critters there's a lot of snakes here and uh, mice and that kind of stuff so I was trying to keep everything cut and trimmed real nice so that uh, uh, it was always a couple of weeks till he'd get up and uh, mow everything, but he likes mowing, and I don't want to take that away from him, and I think that that's what I was doing. Sometimes uh, overdoing it with uh, <laughs> with your landowners, I think, can have a negative impact on you. Um, so we're just going to mow what he had told me to mow originally, and uh, um, take it easy on my uh, lawnmower here. I put a lot of hours on it last year. I think there's 315 hours and at the start of last year i don't think there was even 200 um <laughs> just constantly mowing the, the grass grows so fast around here so yeah i'm um, gonna try to lay off mowing it and it'll help me in the end too because then that's less gas i have to run them by and this 24 25 horsepower uh, engine really goes through the gas so uh yeah we're gonna lay off cutting grass this year i think um just do what he wanted me to do and uh, let him in, get some enjoyment out of that Kubota. I, I'd like to. Um, so anyway, uh, on to the next thing, guys. All right, guys, so if you watch my uh, brake bleeding video on the 685, I'd said to come back a day or two later and check to make sure you still have brake. It's actually two days later from that video, and we got brake. So sometimes these tractors do get some air in uh, the brake system, but everything's working. So like I said, the way I did it, it worked out pretty darn good. And you'll take notice those pain in the rear end uh, three-point arms are gone so 
uh, getting things ready. I'm going to start spraying tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be the first day of field work for uh, me for this year. So I want to get water in, get some uh, stuff mixed, and uh, get ready. Well, it's only a little tractor, but it'll lift the John Deere <laughs> uh, without any ballast on the back either. I'm just moving the stuff I'm not going to use out of the shop for now, make some room. All right, so like I said before, today is entirely too windy to do any spraying. I'll be coated with it, and then uh, we'll have all kinds of problems. Anyway, uh, I got about 350, 320 gallon in here. That's going to be enough. That's about all I want to put in uh, to start uh, some of these uh, fields, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, the wind is supposed to be a lot calmer tomorrow, and it's changing direction. So um, it should be working out into my favor. So we got that done. Uh, we got some water in for tomorrow. I like to do that ahead of time so I don't need to wait so much. Uh, we'll put the chemicals in tomorrow. We'll add some more water. And the uh, foam marker is uh, set up here. And we've got water and the foam solution in. I said I didn't have a hand rinse tank on here to wash your hands. Uh, uh, some guys had said they take jugs along and yes, this is the this blue jug here has fresh water in it And actually it has a little soap in it. It's like a soapy. I don't know There was some soap in the jug So it is kind of a good way to wash your hands with some soapy water there if you do get some residue on um, So we've got everything ready to go there uh, one other thing I want to show you if I can get around here You'll notice there's a little more space here and that's on purpose. Uh, the John Deere hay rake has been moved out of here and so has the other uh, tether that I'm not gonna be using. Uh, I was rearranging the shed here. Uh, well, you probably saw me moving the rake. I'll probably put that clip in uh, before this, but we got that. I got my H&S tether back here. And like I say, I put things away. <laughs> when you have a shed like this where it all comes in one way, uh, I try to think ahead and put things in order from uh, when I'm gonna use them. Sprayer first haybine tether rake wagons <laughs> and the baler is pretty well accessible so just uh, trying to think ahead now like i say my viber shank is in the corner we may need that uh, a little bit here but i moved the let me walk up here those of you guys who uh, might know probably have heard me say it before that wagon in the back there isn't mine with those crates on it and uh it wasn't all the way back in. It was kind of up front here. So I just by hand managed to jockey it and get it out of the way in the back. So I made some room here and I was able to get my John Deere hay rake through uh, this opening and get it. I set it in there with the loader, of course, set it right down and it's out of the way. Um, it's a spare. It's going to be a backup. I might decide to sell it someday. I don't know. Um, but for now, there it is. Uh, I do have all new tines on it. They're the same tines on that international rake that I have. So if I need need parts, it's here. Um, and I also put my tether here. I was kind of upset I couldn't get my tether through this opening. Uh, it's just a little bit, <laughs> a little too narrow. I was trying to jockey it in and uh, didn't have any luck with it. So it's going to have to sit here, which my goal was to keep this area open because I have plans in the works and so windy this roof is going to be off one of these days um part of the another door blew in you guys saw my video on that windy day another door blew in i said every time the wind blows uh, parts of this barn fall off so anyway <laughs> i don't care what the scrap price is right now i have all scrap metal in there scrap metal here i got scrap laying everywhere i uh, want to get it out of here and my neighbor has a dump truck and he was going to give me a hand with that so we're going to load him up and get it out of here because i want this bay open because we do have something coming i think i don't know uh, i'm not going to say anything until we get it figured out so need a little bit more storage here so i don't know if that tether is going to stay there yet or not if the upper shed was emptied out i would put my spare uh, stuff up there but it is what it is so all right guys uh i think that's everything on this video so thanks for watching